one small step for man, but one giant leap for the privatization of space. Tomorrow morning, a company called SpaceX plans to launch a rocket headed for the International Space Station. It is loaded with cargo, groceries for the most part, and astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson is the director of the Hayden Planetarium here in New York, is with us now. He's also the author, by the way, of Space Chronicles, Facing the Ultimate Frontier. Hello to you. Great to I be see back you here. have your Thanks very spacey oh, tie. Oh, yes, I got to go with the tie thing. Sorry. It matches. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking tomorrow, Neil, you're going to be doing the happy dance at your house, are well, you I, not? I think it's a long overdue event that the participation of private launches in our Frontier in space is, is underway. So what's happening exactly when they say they're taking groceries? What does that mean and <laughs> well, how are they getting there? <laughs> well, previously we got to the space station with the space shuttle that had a cargo bay as well as, you know, four, five, six, seven astronauts. Mm -hmm. And you realize you don't actually need the astronauts if you're just going to be delivering mm -hmm. supplies. Mm -hmm. So SpaceX, the company founded by Elon Musk, mm -hmm. who, by the way, also created the PayPal. Tesla. The, uh, yeah, that's how he got rich. Uh, by the way, he's, he's famous for saying... Yeah. How do you make a small fortune in space? Start with a big fortune. <laughs> so it's not, obvi it help, it's yes. not obvious that all this will reap huge money for him, but it's a very important first step in getting private enterprise to participate in the sort of the routine activities that NASA, in my judgment, really shouldn't be doing. We should reserve NASA for advancing a frontier, part of what its charter had established for itself there's, in 1958. There's, but there's mm -hmm. been some criticism about that from Neil Armstrong, other, other astronauts who have said that, that perhaps this isn't the best route. And actually recently Scott Pelley on 60 Minutes spoke with Elon Musk about that. Let's mm -hmm. listen how, it, how he reacted. I was very sad to see that uh, because those guys are, yeah, you know, th those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. So that was the, wow. Scott was asking specifically about their concerns over the safety of things like commercial space flight. Yeah, well, of course, you know, if you're doing something that you haven't done before, there could be accidents, but that's why you test things. And in this particular launch, the Falcon 9 is designed just for cargo, not for people. But SpaceX is in competition for uh, bringing people to the space station as well. And NASA is, has several contractors competing for that birth. So, yeah, you'd want to test it and make sure. But if there's anything that shouldn't be dangerous, it's getting to low Earth orbit, where we've been going since 1961. So, yeah, it's, it's dangerous. But still, you test it and, and it works, then you do it and it's cheaper. Because uh, the, the private enterprise, as we know, in a capitalist system, uh, cares about profits. And they know how to do it cheaper, better, faster. The, the Postal Service doesn't use their own airplanes to move mail. They, they buy space on cargo from a commercial carrier. So they have the resources to do it. Yes. Oh, yes. And, and, and if they do it. Or they're inventing them if they don't. Uh, That's the good part. <laughs> yes. Uh, and if they do it, it's the first step to man flight. Uh, well, so the next phase is, uh, is something called the Dragon, uh, which is a, is that the Dragon? Oh, which is their next sort of generation spacecraft that will carry humans to the space right. station. And then NASA just pays for that. And right, by the way, we're already paying now right. to hitch a ride with the Russians. Actually, if, if you hitch, it's a free ride. So we're not <laughs> hitching. We're, we're paying hundreds of millions of dollars a year to take a seat with the Russians to, to get the same thing done. So uh, let's go for it. Do you think this is going to work? Yeah. yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, you know, it's hard because, you know, the space station is moving 17,000 miles an hour and it's got to catch up with it and dock accurately. And it's, you know, it's hard enough to parallel park on Earth. So yes. this is a, it's a delicate thing, but it's not, it's not something that's never been done before. The late Walter Cronkite always wanted to go up to, in space. Do you? Yeah, here, here's the thing. If you shrink the size of Earth down to a schoolroom globe and all the solar system with it, Mars is a mile away. The moon is 30 feet away. Space station is three eighths of an inch above the surface. So you so want you to, want to say, send me into <laughs> space? Gonna, I'm saying, I, you know, part of it. You don't want to be some, so limited. Is what yeah, you're take saying, me Neil. somewhere. Where not that, to Mars. Not, well, Mars, sure. Mars or the Moon. I'll go. Bring the whole family, kids, yeah. and everything. Oh, yeah. uh, some books. Get a, you know, video account. I, I know I'm, I'm good for it. Yeah, you see science everywhere. Always good to see you. Thanks for having me, Brad. Tyson. Yeah. Always good.